watches that go by the far post. Ivanov kept it in nicely and pressure in the early stages here from Torgayev and the Russians. A bouncing puck goes out into neutral ice territory. Avtikin taps that forward and the race is on. Keenas went one way, Coomer goes the other and eventually frozen along the boards. One or two friendly taps, a change of personnel for both teams. And we take a look at Viktor Tikhanov now, possibly in his last season as coach of a Russian national team. The Russians with two national teams, this one here in the Olympics, another one going on to the World Championships, being coached by Boris Mikhailov. Face off deep in German territory. And Bezukladnikov unable to hang on to that. Meyer calls for it. Meyer on the right side, and there's a Mayer too. That flipped up. Meyer got a tip. A chance now for Mayer as they moved right in. A long clearance away, and that dribbles all the way down to Klaus Merck. Meyer, big defenseman, fires it up on the boards. Tertishny tried to keep it in. Franz got it out. Little tap back by Hilger coming up to the first couple of minutes of this period. And Tertishny brought it in over the line. Offside is the call. Both teams holding the blue line well. The Russian defenseman staying right there. Tertishny unable to control the puck, creating an offside. But the Germans are doing the same thing at the other end of the ice. Their defensemen are holding tight. They don't want to give any room and let the Russians get it wound up. The Russians are returning the favor. Russians first game saw them beat the Norwegians 5-1. That was expected. The second game they were blanked by the Finns 5-0. The Finns the best team in the competition right now. The Swedes are building nicely. So are the Americans and the Canadians. The Russians trying to get it out of the zone and that's cleared away. Denisov couldn't hang on to it. Uh, Niederberger goes deep. Niederberger behind his own net. Hesitates, throws it up on the boards. Nikolishin goes in tough. Vinogradov is now there. Vinogradov, one of the fastest skating Russians, working hard out there. Denisov tried to get a handle on it. Nikolishin looking to get it out front. And Rumrek way back. We're going to have a penalty on the plate. Holding the call. Players are just not being allowed to grab the stick of the opponent. The referees watching it tightly. Both players seem to have a good grip on each other's stick momentarily. Nikolishin had Rick Amon's stick. Two forty-seven, the time of the penalty, which went to Amon. And face off deep in German territory. The race is on as Hemer shoots it off the boards. That only goes as far as the blue line and the Russians doing a great job of trapping that puck right on the blue. One for 14 on the power play. The Russians, not very impressive. Smirnov, a little tap on the backhand side, right up on the right side. Bezukladnov slams on the brakes and Hemer gets a touch and sends it all the way down the ice. Right up the middle, Smirnov breaking on the near side. 126 remaining on the penalty, and that goes deep. Sorokin now for the Russians. Sorokin has been one of the more reliable defensemen, defensemen rather. Usmanov to the far side. Kudakov tips it right back in. The Russians really do miss their mobile defensemen from yesterday. The boys they have now are tough. They're fairly fast, but they just don't have the legs of the Fatisovs in the past. Coming in, Kuzmanov. Kuzmanov circles, drops it all the way back. Sorokin flips it over. The one-timer comes in. Merrick goes down. Brendel takes a swipe at it and clears it all the way down the ice. This team for the Russians does not move the puck as quick as teams of the past, but that one wasn't a bad play and a good quick shot taken from the defense. Boy, they must have heard me. Berezin dropped that off, and now the Russians, Kuzmanov throws it over to an open wing. Both teams trying to get fresh legs out there as this power play continues. Shendelev on the near side. That doesn't come his way. Big shot goes upstairs. Berezin takes a chop. Shendelev can't trap it along the boards. 
Ivanov for the Russians drops it back. 12 seconds now on the power play. Etiukin goes right through with Torgayev dancing on the goal crease, but Merrick comes up with another save. Randall going to the bench and Trunchka getting out there quickly. Bern Trunchka creating problems for the Russians. The Germans have good penalty killers. The box is well set up. The long shot coming in. As long as the defensemen clear the forwards in front, Merrick will handle these shots all day. Tarasov getting it away from the blue line. Good pressure coming from the Russians here. 4.39 gone in the period. Another shot comes in. Merrick goes down. The backhander doesn't come. Bezukladnov buzzing around that net and couldn't get the shot away. And the Germans back at full strength. Bezukladnov tried to do the wraparound, but he really wasn't allowed to get in a position. Boritsky, a lot of chopping. Stefan Ustor pushed out of the play, and the Russians with Shendelev, or Shagorodsky rather, way back in their own zone. Chagorodsky slowly moves it up, fans on the shot, and Franz tips it away into the far corner. The Germans now throwing the puck around in their own zone. Veritsky trying to do a little forechecking. Amon being pressured, throws it over onto the near side to Niederberger. Niederberger, a little tip up on the right side, and here come the Germans. Trunchka hit hard. Hilger taken out of the play. That's thrown into the far side to Davidov. Davidov working with Franz and the Germans keep it in the zone as that was pushed right from the blue line all the way back into the near corner. Davidov picks it up for the Russians and breaks down the left side. Davidov given a bit of a rough ride. Rumerick gets way back. Rumerick a good two-way player. Throws it up right onto the blue. A big hit and the Germans get it out. A break now for number 33, Hendrik. Hendrik going down the far side into the corner. Can't get it out front. Venda goes in hard, and the Russians now go on the defensive. Venda circles in the corner. That bobbles out. Almost a two-on-one break for the Russians as uh, Nikolishin just couldn't tap that forward, working up with Denisov. A bouncing puck, and Nikolishin slows it down. Both teams, again, going for a change out there. Nikolishin winds up, takes the shot, and that misses the far post. Jason Meyer unable to get it out of the zone. And the Germans again with a quick change. Now they seem to have settled things down, and Meyer taps it up. Almost a quick break there. Hagen breaking through. He was dropped down all the way back to the blue. Shot comes in. A backhander. It's in the net. Trunchka from an impossible angle opens his account. Germany going to the offense. Hagen getting pulled down as he went through on the original play. It was a nice pass fed through for him. The Germans maintain the pressure. Trunchka prevailing in the end. Shot coming from the blue. The original save is made. Bern Trunchka quick to pounce on it. Duce was right there as well. Dieter Hagen at the left side waiting to see if anything else would happen. A delayed penalty was being called. That will be scrubbed out as Bern Trunchka has Germany in the lead. Trunchka at the seven minute mark. And the Russians now get it and fire it as far as the blue. That bounces and they'll have to go deep into their own zone to collect. A long clearance away by Eptukin. Kinas off the boards. Trunchka having problems with Torgayev. Hagen, a little tap up. Trunchka, Trunchka and Hagen, two familiar names. Ivanov picks it up in the corner, bounces it away from Hagen, and here come the Russians. Two on two situation. Duce trying to get back into the play. Shot from an impossible angle again, goes way upstairs. And both teams shooting from all angles out there in the early stages of this first period. Players ducking in a hurry. That shot went up onto the net above the plexiglass in a matter of a split second. Action around the Russian goal. Hagen is held and tied up. Bern Trunchka carries on. A pretty sharp angle manages to put that backhander just inside the post. 
1-0 the score here in the first period. Beritsky taps it over, and the Russians again fire it in. We're not seeing these pretty plays that we used to see from the Russians. It's a lot of dump and run from this young, inexperienced side. Beritsky tried to fire it in, and again, the Germans getting back in their threes and fours. Beritsky along the boards. Some good stuff now from Shargorodsky. There's a Kladnikov and Beritsky from the side of the net, right out front. Merck couldn't handle it. Karpov took a swipe at it. And that bounced unkindly for the Russians and the Germans get it out of the zone. Karpov doing a good job. Rick Emmen trying to tie him up. Karpov nearly had a good one on that rebound. Randall goes after his man Karpov. Karpov circles back. This guy has got lots of moves. Karpov throws it in. Ammon is there for the Germans. Ammon. Ammon, a long pass through center, is intercepted, and the Russians now coming back quickly. A chance for 21. Denisov, the shot goes off the plexi. That took a deflection. Nikolishin is there quickly. Nikolishin bats it down, can't keep it in the zone, and drops it all the way back to his own defense. Tarasov throws it up along the boards. Denisov taken out of the play by Meyer. Some good defensive moves by number six for Germany. Duse gets a little touch and lets it ride. Ustorf passes it forward. Hilger is there for the Germans. Right in front now, right through the center. Franz back to Hilger. Meyer taps it in and Franz is there. He takes a hit and gives it to Hilger. Some good stuff now from the Germans as they play with the Russians in their own zone. Hilger tried to control it perhaps for too long, and Denisov picks it up at his own blue. Denisov throws it up onto the left wing. Vinogradov, Nikolishin, right in front. Vinogradov was there, and again, the Russians can't come up with a goal. Merrick looking sharp between the pipes for Germany. Vinogradov has been out there a long time. He drops it back to Sorokin, who peppers that to the far side. Vinogradov decides to go to the bench instead of going for the puck. Hemer taps it up. Hagen, Hagen breaking through. One yellow score. Hagen is brought down. Boy, this guy's not happy. The Germans on the attack. The puck dumped in. The Russians trying to make sure they're going to have a body back there first. Pull the German forward down as he's attacking. Close action earlier. Good shot taken by 19. Vinogradov. Good reflexes by Klaus Merck. Kudakov in the penalty box for hooking. Midway as points in the first period. 1-0 still the score. The Germans leading the Russians. 2 for 13 on the power play. Not too impressive for the Germans. Penalty killing. Looking a lot better for the Russians. Duce gets set for the face-off. And we're going to see just what this power play is made of. Long clearance didn't work. He must strips it in. The rebound comes out front. He scores! Trunchka picks up number two for himself and number two for the Germans. The Germans changed their lines just a bit to adjust for the power play. Trunchka going with Hagen and Benoit Duce. It works as they score a very quick power play goal. The puck directed to the net. The Russians unable to control it. Burn Trunchka right in front of the goal. Directs it behind Abramov with a backhander. Welcome back. Action now in the second period. Klaus Mark still hanging on to that shutout. 2-0 the score. The Germans leading the Russians. And the first period action was certainly a surprise for a lot of people. I think the Germans knew exactly what they were doing. Merck goes down. And that bobbles into the corner. And the Russians doing everything possible out there, but they still haven't been able to crack that goose egg. Once again, we see the Russians looking frustrated, and they're actually showing it on the ice. Torgayev, number 23, 
banging his stick on the ice, his head's in the air, he's talking, saying he just can't seem to find the handle. That's the story for the Russians right now. The Germans, two goals in front, and the Russians just can't seem to get anything past Klaus Merck. At Tukin from the faceoff, that comes back with the... German Ducey picks it up. Ducey is hooked by Eptiukin. Flip over in the middle. A chance now for the Germans. As Abramov came way out of his net. Going in quickly was Hagen and took the shot. Now was deflected away. A chance at the other end of the rink. Eptiukin lets it fly and Merck gets a big save there. Trunchka on the far side watches that ride. Another one comes out front. It's cleared away by Ducey. Ducey and Trunchka on the far side. Trunchka slams on the brakes. Slows it down just a little. And the Germans go back on the attack. Everyone turns around and looks at the official. And this is what they're going to see. The crowd had made their mind up before the referee actually did. The Oregon player does his thing. The referee goes to the box to signal interference as Dieter Hagen is dropped down onto the ice. Shendelev is the culprit. Shendelab sits for two, and as I said earlier on, he's one of the more steady defensemen, along with Sorokin. Brandel into the face-off circle. Brandel working with Kumar on the wing. That comes all the way back to the D. Mayer is there. Mayer looking for places to go, throws it along the blue line. The shot comes in, deflected by Stefan. And again, the Germans feed it back. Mayer working with Meyer and the Germans now with the younger power play out there right from the side of the net right out front Stefan scores power play goal boy did they make that look easy what happened to the box five years ago I would have said that was a Russian power play not so now the Russians are struggling the Germans move it so quickly and put a lovely goal into the net through Leo Stefan Good, quick passing. Stefan gives it off and continues on into the slot. All it is is give and go hockey. The puck is on his stick, and it's very quickly into the back of the Russian net. Brandel back to Stefan. Stefan just putting it into the net. What a goal for Germany. Second power play goal of the game. Things not going well for the Russians, that's for sure. Well... Bopes, when is the last time you saw a scoreline like that? Just a few days ago, Finland had them 3-0, and that ended up 5-0. <laughs> Ustorf kicks it back, and the Germans playing with a lot of confidence out there, coming out of their own zone. And uh, a few days ago, we said that the Russians lacked a team leader, and that's certainly true. They need a big man out there, someone who can direct and advise they don't have any anyone on the ice who can do that right now they miss a beak off a homotov a makarov you can keep naming them but they aren't around that goes right out front and the germans pick it up and bring it in with ustorf ustorf is being followed by hilger ustorf moves right in front of shot franz rattled that off the post and what are the russians doing they're standing around out there waiting to be attacked by the germans a long clearance down the ice, and Abramov will have words with his defenseman when they come back. Let's take a look at this again. Ustorf cutting in, leaning on the Russian defense. The other defenseman caught watching the play. George Franz jumps in and slams it off the post. But we're going to take a short break. Stay with us. This one is starting to heat up. The Germans are looking strong. Welcome back. The Russians on the attack, but they trail it three goals to nil here in the second period. Eftukin tries to get it back, and that doesn't work. That was rattled off the side of the post there. Tarasenko working hard in the corner. Eftukin is there. Torgayev is out there too. And this line seems to be gaining in momentum as the Russians go along, but they're still not able to collect those goals. They're finding it tough. The Russians have lost the popularity contest and the high ranking they had coming into the Olympic Games. But this German team has been very impressive. We said before their first game, they looked a bit old, an older lineup, a lot of veteran players maybe missing the youth. And 
some speed. Well, they're certainly turning it on. Evtyuk and Torgayev, that's number one. Merck made the first save on Evtyukin. But Torgayev came up, camped on the far post to bang it in the back of the net. Torgayev, the guy who was showing his frustration, his last shift on the ice, has got the goal to get Russia finally on the scoreboard. Klaus Merck's bubble has been burst. The first save is there. He can't control the rebound. Brandel not quite quick enough to get back on Torgayev. He's open just long enough to bang the rebound into the net. A lot of traffic in front of that goaltender there with Niederberger falling down. But uh, Torgayev comes up with the little tip at the last moment at 15.09 to make it a little more respectable. 3-1 to the score now. The Germans still with a two-goal deficit there. And that's flipped all the way into the corner, going back for it. Kinas. Kinas with Guzmanov. And Guzmanov has been, dis has been disappointing in this one. A shot comes in with Franz letting it go. I was just about to say, or I was trying to say that Ravel Guzmanov, the 21-year-old who wears 29, really hasn't shown his stuff. In the first couple of games, he was on fire. This guy was electric, and he was all over the ice. He seems to have taken a back seat. The initial shot from Evtyuk, and there's a rebound by Torgayev. Action going the other way right after the goal. A good chance for George Franz. Abramov with a nice save for the Russians. of German support here in Norway and that comes through. Benda takes the shot. That goes upstairs so we'll have another face-off. As you can well imagine the Germans with their big Olympic team as well as their fans not that far away are here in their thousands and they're looking for an upset. Could this be the end of the line for this man here? I hope not. He's been such an inspiration to so many players like him or not, he's a great coach along the boards. And Mayer couldn't keep it in. A break now. Mezuklednikov lets the shot go, and that just misses the far post. The Germans now breaking quickly, and this is something they're doing well. Getting down the ice with Benda now. Benda working with Hendrik. Hendrik falls. Mezuklednikov tries to get it away and gives it right in front of the net. Benda was there, and... Uh, some terrible defensive moves out there from the Russians. Sloppy stuff. Bezukladnikov all on his own. Squeezed out of the corner. Now he gets a little support. Nikolishin and Karpov. Karpov unable to push uh, Trunchka off the puck. From the side of the net, Karpov looking to tip it away. All the way back to the blue, and that's bobbled. Tertishny couldn't keep it in. Now he has to fire it in. Russians going for a change. Boy, the Russians are giving the puck away like we've never seen them give it away before. Trunchka at center ice waits for a little support and then flips it in. Davidov now. Davidov rattles that up onto the wing and the Russians trying to get it away and they do. Vinogradov got the pass off. Denisov along the boards. And the big shadow was coming from Niederberger. Niederberger takes a swipe at it, goes back at it again, and throws it forward into the near corner. Nikolishin is out there. He's spun around, still hangs on to the puck. Some good stuff from him. Hagen way back behind his own net. Denisov takes him out of the play. And Coomer flips it high. Ammon wants it. Tips it with a high stick, but that's waved off. And the Germans with Hagen and Ammon along the near side. Hagen drops it back onto his own D. Niederberger throws it up onto the wing. Neither goal being threatened for a long time. Tarasov now brings it up. Tarasov, a gentle tap, and that bobbles over Vinogradov's stick. Both teams trying to complete their change as Brandel takes it deep. A lot of snow on the ice. The puck is bouncing around. Both teams are having a hard time handling it right now. It really is difficult. Good interception in neutralized territory. And a good shot there coming from Torgayev. Torgayev let it fly. Menek was there. Torgayev along the boards. And Hemer is there too. Kumer, sorry, I was just going to say this guy Coomer seems to impress every time out as well. 
He definitely is playing better and better hockey every shift. He's getting good opportunities to advance himself when he's being put out on the line with the likes of Bern Trunchko or finding himself on the wing with Dieter Hagen. I was just going to say, Paul, that Torgeyev, Pavel Torgeyev, number 23 for the Russian team, has been impressive. He's just a no-nonsense, hard-working hockey player. Stefan breaks through at Tiuka, and Stefan looking for Kumar. Some good defensive stuff by the Russians, and Ivanov picks it up. Stefan shadows, Ivanov drops it back, and the Russians now looking to get something going. At Tiuka, one or two good little moves, brings it out, throws it up on the wing, and this is looking good for the Russians. Randall getting way back as Guma, uh, Guzmanov was dumped. Torgayev still out there. Merck throws it, but not good enough. Right through the circle now. The Russians trying to bring it back in. There's going to be a penalty on the play. Ivanov brought it into the corner. Torgayev muscles just a little behind the net. And the indication from the referee is high sticking. The Russian players crowding around. One of their teammates on his knees, Coomer going to the penalty box for high sticking. The Russians will have a power play. Eighteen thirty-seven, the time of the penalty. So this one will go into the next period. Unless, of course, the Russians come up with a power play goal. Face off deep in German territory. One for 17 on the power play. Ooh, 94.7% killing them off. The odds don't look very good for the Russians. Kudakov, Ustorf. Ustorf has it in the skate. Kudakov, that comes back. Sorokin lets a shot go. Merrick went down. That bobbles into the corner. And Smirnov takes a chop at it. And the Russians now with Berezin. Sorokin. Sorokin, a gentle tap up. Usmanov through the middle. Kudakov on this side. Shot right in on goal. Berezin is there. Merrick went down to make the save. Franz in the corner goes in heavily. And number 35, Meyer ties his man up. Ustor has his clearance tapped or tipped up high. Meyer eventually completes the job and gets it out of the rink. Ustorf going down low to help Meyer and Mayer on the defense. Klaus Merck having a quick chat as the players are going off the ice saying just let me keep seeing these shots. Number 12 Berezan coming right in at him earlier getting a shot off and then nearly getting the rebound. Klaus Merck has uh, made some spectacular saves but he's also had a couple of things bounce his way. You probably think they're wearing that to be silly. They're wearing it to stay warm when it's 30 degrees below zero outside. The crowds were anticipated to be good, but I think they've even been better at these games because a lot of people are coming in to get the warmth. <laughs> Face off just inside the blue. Doucet taking his time. Shogorodsky and Doucet square off, and that comes over to Sorokin. Sorokin. Takes his time to throw it into Karpov, and Karpov couldn't get onto that. Verinsky throws it back. Bezukladnikov. His pass is deflected away. We have another whistle on the plate. Verinsky has been quiet in this way. He usually works well with Karpov. But the two of them, I say they've been quiet. They really haven't been given the space. Verinsky and Karpov momentarily line mates. Could be playing against each other. The pair of 22-year-olds have both been drafted by the NHL in 93. Karpov, Anaheim, Veritsky possibly going to Boston. Bezukladnikov against Doucet. Doucet stays out there. And Doucet gets it back. The Germans looking to kill off this penalty. 29 seconds left on the period. Shagorodsky for Russia. Moves it up on the left side. Shagorodsky trails now as that comes up to Bezukladnikov. Bezukladnikov backhands it off the backboards over the far side to Karpov. That comes back onto the D. Shagorodsky to Karpov. Karpov has several options. A chance for Tertishny. Let's a shot go, and that's wide of the target. Five seconds on the period, and that bobbles too far, and the Russians cannot do anything on the power play in this period anyway. Germans putting together another good period, 3-1 after 40 minutes of play. That period going 1-1. Well, 
Well, we're going to take another break now, but stay with us. We have action from the third and final period in just a moment. Welcome back, Germany 3, Russia 1, the start of the third period. And this definitely is a surprise scoreline. Coach Tikhanov probably not believing it more than anybody else. He's got to do something here and get these guys going. They're down by two. That's the key there. The Russians just aren't going, but the Germans aren't letting them go. They're clamping them down. And right now the Germans are shorthanded with Coomer in the box all the way back. Big shot comes in, deflected away. Hagen takes his time and just shoves it right down the ice. The old timer, Dieter Hagen, playing some good two-way hockey. Long shot comes in. Merck will get this and he pops it high. FTU can try to glove it down. Ivanov goes deep and the goaltender throws it away. A two-on-one situation. Cooper takes a shot. And Abramov really didn't make the best clearance in the world. That comes out now to Stefan. Stefan pops it to the top of the circle. The shot comes in. Ivanov got in front of that. And the Russians get it out of the zone. A chance now for the Russians coming up quickly. And that's batted away into the corner. Coomer getting back in a hurry. Niederberger as always is tough there. Tarasenko working hard. And the Russians unable to string it together on the power play. Long pass, no one there. Niederberger picks it up, bounces it off the boards, and sends it into neutralized territory. Both the Russians and the Germans trying to get new legs out there. That hit the official, and that hurts. Going in quickly on the wing. Right out front, Berezin was there, and he slid it past the far post. Guzmanov set him up from close in. Big shot, score! Kudashov. Electric shot from about 30 feet out. What a blast by Kudashov. Good work from Berezin and Kuzmanov. Kuzmanov with probably his best shift of the game. He has been quiet, as you mentioned earlier, Paul. Skating around, making things happen for the Russians. That's what they need to keep him doing. All kinds of time in the slot. That shot is drilled by Kudashov at 139 of the third period. We got two Germans heading south on that play. Everyone had gone beyond the blue line and no one was back. Kudashov was all alone. He could have had a picnic back there. 1.39 the time of the goal. 3-2 to two, and the Russians are closing this one down. Brilliant start for the big red machine. Bezukladnikov gets the draw back and the Russians quickly shoot it in with Sharagrodsky getting a piece of it. Bezukladnikov goes in in a hurry. That comes up along the boards. And the Russians unable to trap it on the blue line. Hilger trying to move through center ice. Bezukladnikov, the return pass, taps it up on the wing. Karpov backhands it. Gets a little assistance there. Karpov through the circle is dropped back. Ustorf trying to stay on him. Bezukladnikov is there. And Hemer gives it a swipe and sends it down the ice. Icing is the call as Shargorodsky goes back and both teams change up. As you mentioned on the last Russian goal, the Germans were going outside the zone a bit early. The other thing that could hurt them is what they're doing now. They're backing into a shell. They're going to have to stay into playing the same kind of game that's gotten them this far. They were ahead 3-1 at the end of two periods by being aggressive up front and making sure they were moving the puck all over. They don't want to try and sit into a defensive shell. Franz for Germany. Little pass up on the wing. Shot away there by Benda. And Abramov decides to hang on to that right on the red line. So we'll have a face-off deep in Russian territory. Sergei Abramov plays for Moscow Dynamo. 34 years old and it's unusual to see an aging goalie on the Russian side, Zuyev, who's 29, has had a couple of starts. Ivan Ikov, who's 27, hasn't seen action yet. Long pass right up the middle. And Denisov let the shot go. Meyer was on him. Back to the blue line, kept in. Denisov curling out front, looking for the pass. It doesn't come his way. Nikolishin in the corner. Rumrek goes after him. Vinogradov is there. And the Germans get back again in numbers, steal the puck, and here they come. Coming up quickly. 
33, Pandrick. Hendrick at the red line, at the blue line. Hendrick getting around Ivanov at the side of the net, and Hendrick kept skating. Wilmerich takes over. Ivanov is there to shoot it away from Benda. A bobbling puck on the far side, and the Russians now with uh, Ivanov trying to move it. Niederberger for Germany. Niederberger, long shot right on the target. Abramov lets the rebound come out. Another one comes in. Abramov goes down. Abramov having to be quick. Vern Trunchka waiting right next to him. But Abramov holding onto the puck long enough for a whistle. The Russians unable to clear. Big shot coming. Ducey getting all of that one. Vern Trunchka right by the side of the goal. Three Russians back in front of the net. off in Russian territory 3-2 to score 3-20 going on the period and the Germans are starting to pick up their game here for a moment we thought they may be guilty of sitting back and going into a shell as uh, Bopes described Niederberger to the far side that hands it right to the Russians that Tukin is breaking up the middle and the pass didn't come his way Niederberger goes back over the red line slams on the brakes up on the right wing Niederberger has played a lot of this game. Clearance all the way down to the goaltender, and he has to hang on to it. Another face-off in Russian territory. It's exactly what the Germans have got to do. They've got to just keep applying the pressure, going forward, being aggressive, making the Russians move the puck and staying right on top of them. When that puck goes into Abramov's goal, the Germans are just going right at him. That's what they've got to do. Make him hold the puck, take the face-off down in that end of the ice. Bukac has done his homework, that's for sure, up until now, but a long way to go in this game. That bobbles back. Smirnov is there for the Russians. Smirnov, a little tip up on the wing. Kudashov now trying to break through, and that's thrown up on the wing for the Russians. Berezin, Berezin gets it all the way behind the goal, and Kinas goes in hard. Guzmanov now trying to get in there, and Kudashov, who really is developing in this tournament, Tried to spin around and get it back into the corner. It didn't work for the Russians. Niederberger still out there. He's had a long shift. The backhander doesn't clear uh, the zone. And Berezin got a tip. Guzmanov takes a hard hit from Brandel. And everyone seemed to stand around for a moment. Brandel almost gave it away. Hilger backhands it off the boards. And the Germans can breathe again. Sorokin gets away from Coomer. Long pass up the middle. Bezukladnikov gives it away. Coomer comes down, hits the blue, lets the wrist shot go. He scores! Whoa, that looked innocent enough. Number four for Germany. We've both said it, Paul. Wolfgang Coomer has been impressive. He just keeps getting more and more confidence with every shift on the ice. A big congratulations from his teammates. Number 21 coming down the ice after a bad pass by the Russians. He snaps a wrist shot pass by a pass to Bramov without any problem. A lovely goal for young Coomer. Well, he certainly wasn't screened on this. Another break coming up. What a goal from the Germans. What an end to the period. Welcome back, and this man, Tikhanov, is not a happy camper out there. This really is building to a great finish. 17.05 gone on the period, and the Germans are hanging on to that 4-2 score line. For a moment, we thought they were going to sit back, then a big goal by Coomer has put them ahead by two once again. And you can see the frustration on the faces of the Russian players. They just can't seem to string it together. The Germans really haven't let them settle. They've been in their faces all afternoon, and that's been the game plan. Do not let them touch the puck and have room to move, because if they do, they will punish you. There's still time to go in this period, but the Germans have played well enough to win. They've picked out the Russian weaknesses, and they've capitalized on them. Speaking of picking things out, before this one is over, I'm going to ask you for a minute of the match out there. I could give them to you already, but we'll wait. Okay, a little flip up by Franz. Ustorf gets it over. Franz goes a backhand, and he goes right into the net. Karpov goes the other way. Franz was so close to making it five. 
Franz, happy to be a player of the 90s, going back to one of your old stories, Paul, about those big steel posts they used to drill into the ice before the period could start. This is one happy guy that the net comes off a bit quicker. You hit that net and it goes wish with you. That's the theory anyway. In the old days, as Bopes just said, they used to have big six inch posts that just would not move. You don't remember those days, do you? No, I don't. I'm going to quickly jump in on that one. <laughs> Franz goes to the box, goes to the bench rather, and takes a, a breather for to the score line. And the Germans with the face off deep in Russian territory do say wants the Russian defenseman out of the circle. He gets it just for a moment. Everyone, of course, has to be out of that circle except for the two centermen. Bezut Kladnikov says, I'm not going to stand around here waiting for Doucet to dictate. He eventually is told to leave for good. Varitsky goes in. Varitsky uh, pops that through. Karpov can't move it up. And Shargorodsky gets the tap. Mayer. Mayer starting to move up on the right side. His pass is a good one up on, up on the right side in neutralized territory. Tertishny. He knows that he's running out of time and he's got to move it quickly. The Russians circling, doubling back. Shargorodsky hits the blue, throws it in. The final two minutes of the game. A backhander by Mayer is not a good one. Ustorf comes in quickly. Ustorf takes it to the far hash marks and that's just tipped out into the opening there. And Hagen got it through. A chance for Doucet. Doucet flips it right in front. Hagen moves right in quickly and couldn't tip it into the open net. The Germans still hungry, two men caught in, but Trunchka quick to get back to help out the defenseman. Along the boards, and Doucet just flips it high, and this sends Tarasov deep. Doucet and Hagen quickly getting off the ice, doing the right thing. A long clearance by the Russians, they're going to try to set it up, Ammon gets in there. Ammon moves slowly along the boards, he's just trying to kill off these last few seconds. Tarasov whistles that high. Merck along the boards. Good clearance, clever thinking by the goaltender. Keep the puck moving out there. The final minute of play. Niederberger along the boards. Kumar is there. Denisov wants a poke at it. And that keeps going. The Germans keep the clock winding down. They're leading this 4-2. The Russians need to get control deep in the German zone, try and get Abramov off the ice, maybe force a face-off, but right now the Germans are keeping the play going nicely. Vinogradov gets it all the way back. Stefan goes out to shadow. Vinogradov at his own blue line. Time ticking down. A chance now for Nikolishin. He throws it over. Shot comes in, and that deflects through. Brandel is there. Nikolishin spins round. And Merck had it for a moment with 29 seconds on the game. Merck says, hey, I didn't really have that. Why did you blow the whistle? The referee lost sight of it. That's why. Merck didn't, ha didn't have it, not by his own choice. He couldn't control it. He might better just keep quiet and get ready for the face-off. Action earlier, Doucet going in, Abramov way out of his net. Doucet sees Dieter Hagen flying in toward the goal. That one just failing to click. We got a second here, men of the match. I'll go with Coomer, young Wolfgang Coomer for the German side, number 21, whose goal at 4.47 of this period probably broke the Russians back. And for the Russians. The Russians, number 23, Pavel Torgayev, a good, hard-working forward, scoring the first goal and not stopping throughout this game. All-important face-off here with 29 seconds to go. And Tukin is sent out to take the face-off. And the Russians are struggling in this competition. Big shot for him back. Hemer takes a slice away from Varitsky. Ivanov can't control it, and that kind of sums it up for the Russians. They go back on the defensive. And it really isn't going to be their afternoon. 14 seconds on the clock. Some clutching and grabbing behind the nets. The crowd here counting this one down. Ivanov can't get it out of his own net. Two seconds on the clock. The Germans have beaten the Russians 4-2. A well-deserved victory for the Germans. They go to 3-1. and one. The Russians to 2-2. Two and two. The, position, the positions in the table so important now as we get ready for the medal round. The Germans have reason to celebrate.
Big one tomorrow, Canada against Slovakia, and later on in the evening, USA against Sweden. Two excellent hockey games to watch here on Eurosport. But right now, the Germans celebrate, and they deserve it. They really did play some good hockey, some intelligent hockey. Absolutely. Ticking off, talking with the coaching staff. They know they've got more work to do. They should get to the medal round. They're still in it. Don't count out the Russians, but right now it looks like they're not going to be winning a medal. The Germans, who knows? They're a bit unpredictable. They're the Cinderella team out there. We're going to leave you now. But